Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Today I have a really interesting topic for discussion, but before that, let me inform you all that the PDF of this session is already there on the Telegram channel. So, uh, give a pause to the video, download the PDF, keep the PDF with you uh, while you are studying the content. Okay, so this will help you in retaining the facts for a longer period of time. So, let's move ahead with the video. And guys, before moving on to the topic itself, let me inform you that we have this application on Google Play Store. You can download it for exploring more and more options like daily GK, past years, toppers, strategies and many more things. So you can download it uh, by after this session. So guys, I hope that you have covered this Cipri's report on nuclear weapons. If you haven't covered it, so this session is going to be really, really interesting for you. For two reasons. First is that we are going to discuss this Cipri's report on nuclear weapon and the second reason is that I am going to tell you all the treaties that are there for governing the nuclear weapons in the world. So let's first focus on the report which has no uh, we can say complex facts here. The, there are very basic facts from the report. Uh, first of all I hope that you all are aware that this CIPRI, that is the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, basically gives us the reports related to nuclear weapons, arms sales and the trade of arms in the world. So one of the reports that CIPRI has released right now focuses on the nuclear weapons that the countries are accumulating. And guys, this would be really shocking for all of you that for the first time after the world wars, after the cold war, sorry, for the first time countries are seen to be increasing their nuclear arsenal and India too has increased its nuclear warheads. So how many nuclear warheads does India possess? Wait for that, we will come to that. But let's first see how many countries in the world have uh, been officially recognized as the nuclear weapon countries. So by the number all of you must have known that they are 9 countries. Okay, so we have the five permanent members of UNSC that is US, UK, France, Russia and China. These five countries are already there which are the members of the, uh, which are the nuclear possessing countries as well as the P5, the permanent five members of the United Nations Security Council. Four more members are there, India, Pakistan and your Israel and North Korea. Okay. Now how will you remember these nine nuclear weapon countries? First of all, let's look at that. divide the countries into pairs okay so russia us russia india pakistan and china okay because these three have a very integral integral linkage right then we have uk france and i hope that you all know that at one point of time uk and france had a very uh, bitter relationship Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 members and now we have 2 new members or we can say 2 very out of the, uh, very outlandish members. Okay, one is North Korea and another one is Israel. So these are the 9 nuclear possessing countries and you can memorize them by uh, linking them into pairs. Okay, US, Russia, India, Park, China and UK, France. North Korea and Israel, these are two, uh, we can say very anomalous uh, com combination, but this will help you in memorizing the country. Okay, so what is the observation of this report? This report has observed that since the Cold War, since the time period of 1986, the total number of nuclear weapons have reduced in, it, in the world. So at one point of time, as many as 70,000 nuclear warheads existed at of uh, uh, existed in 1986 and guys this is this is really huge two nuclear bombs killed many people in japan and this much would be would be sufficient to destroy the entire planet then we have 12705 this is not very less but yes significantly less in comparison to this even though uh, we have 12705 nuclear weapons in 2022 in the world but they are capable of destroying the entire planet because over the period of time the capability 
the destroying power of these nuclear weapons have also been increased okay abhi to hydrogen bomb banane ki bhi baat ho rahi hai hydrogen bomb ke upar bhi uh, kaam chal raha hai so god knows where this uh, race is going to stop maybe at the end of this world okay so guys these are the nine countries these are the number of warheads that the countries possess according to cipri's report as of january 2022 so let's have a quick glance over it russia has the maximum number of nuclear warheads and just a marginally less number of nuclear warheads is possessed by us now let's come to india so india has also increased its nuclear weapons and in terms of the nuclear warheads india stands at the seventh position so india has 116 nuclear warheads which is an increment over the last year so india ka yaad rakhna that's all iske zyada isse zyada kisi ka yaad rakhne ki aapko zarurat nahi hai bas india ka pata hona chahiye that we have 116 nuclear warheads i don't know is it something to feel proud of or is it something to feel threatened of okay not only in context of india i'm talking about the, in the context of the world look at the number of warheads russia is possessing look at the number of warheads every country is possessing even north korea and israel are uh, basically are at the nascent stages but they are definitely going to build on it and this is not something to show the prowess on but we cannot do anything we just need to pray for the ukrainians who are stranded in the war although right now there is no such news that russia is going to use the nuclear weapons there but it remains a precarious situation okay moving ahead the, this report further states that china which possesses 350 warheads as of january 2022 is seen to be building more and more nuclear silos okay the place where nu nuclear missile is kept okay so 300 nuclear missile silos are being built by china according to satellite images obviously china does not reveal its intentions and its actions it's only the aftermath of its actions that are revealed okay so north korea is believed to have around 50 nuclear missiles but the data is only about 90 uh, sorry uh, new, uh, north korea ka hai uh, 20 israel has 90 and i have already told you that for the first time since the cold war the world has seen to increase its nuclear weapons okay so maybe it can be indicative of new era of cold war or a new beginning of a world war okay so let's have a look at the nuclear governing treaties as well are there anything are there any new treaties or any kind of organization that is governing the nuclear weapons in the world so the answer to that question is a definite yes so guys first of all before moving into the treaties let me inform you that there are n regarding nuclear weapons but at this moment only the significant treaties that are talked about that have a little bit of influence over the countries are here in front of you okay so we are going to discuss them and in a very brief manner kyunki isse zyada na to aapke exam mein pucha jayega aur na hi aapko general awareness ke liye isse zyada pata hone ki zarurat hai okay so kam padhenge par zyada fayda uthayenge so the very first treaty is outer space treaty this treaty does not circumscribe around the nuclear weapons only it basically deals with the outer space assets the celestial bodies okay so let's have a look at the facts first is that it came into force in 1967 at present 111 countries are members to this treaty and the most important part is that india is also a member to this treaty now let's understand what is the crux of it so this treaty basically prohibits nuclear weapons in space that is one point it limits the use of moon and other celestial bodies for peaceful purposes that is another point establishing that space shall be freely explored and used by all nations prohibition uh, prohibiting any country from claiming sovereignty over outer space or any celestial body however us is the one who should read it okay because us has uh, released a law that is uh, that is Uh, telling or basically giving us the autonomy to use or claim the part of moon as its own so this is something that the officials in the us should read first moving ahead the next is nuclear non proliferation treaty that is npt so basically it opened in 1968 entered into force in 1970 always remember guys that a treaty is known with the date 
for uh, on which it was open for signature okay for example nuclear non proliferation treaty 1968 would be the full name of this treaty okay i hope you have understood it now it has been ratified by 191 countries and this is a huge huge number and the link that you are seeing is the link of the un's uh, office for disarmament website where the members and their accession status have been uh, is there okay so you can just use this link to have a look at the members of this treaty which is in my opinion is unnecessary okay you don't have to go into the details right now let's have a very interesting point here let's discuss about that un's unsc's permanent five members that are russia usa france uk china these five countries are the members of the nuclear non proliferation treaty whereas india pakistan israel and north korea are not the members north korea ne to sign bhi kiya tha but later on it withdraw withdrew from the treaty but why is it that india is not a member of this treaty first of all this treaty prevents the spread of nuclear weapons and weapon technology and i don't think that indian government or the indian uh, head honkos would have any kind of problem with that why would we spread the nuclear technology but might be the indian uh, government or it might not be in the interest of india to promote nuclear disarmament to uh, destroy our own nuclear capacity when our uh, our rivals pakistan and china have uh, so much nuclear weapons with themselves so many nuclear weapons with themselves okay peaceful use of nuclear energy is again not a point of contention here the point of contention is nuclear disarmament which is uh, we can say stopping india from joining the npt treaty and guys do you know this fact that if a country is not a member of this npt treaty it cannot become a member of nst nuclear suppliers group so guys this is basically a group of countries that supply the essential raw material for making nuclear weapons and essential raw material is uranium so it is basically a group of countries that controls the supply of uranium in the world therefore india does not have access to uranium that much the uranium that we grow on our land is the one that we use for nuclear weapon and creating electricity from the nuclear power so that is the situation but we cannot accept to the npt treaty because the five permanent members which have acceded to this treaty they are also not uh, that much into it they are also not going to follow you all can understand whom am i referring to okay so the next treaty is cbed arms control treaty okay this is also known as treaty on the prohibition of the emplacement of nuclear weapons and other uh, weapons of mass destruction on the seabed and the ocean floor in the subsoil thereof okay so it is very uh, easy from its name itself the purpose of this treaty is to prevent the use of nuclear weapons on the sea or below the ocean okay it opened for signature in 1971 therefore its complete name is seabed arms control treaty of 1971 but it came into force in 1972 94 members have ratified unsc's permanent five have not ratified it completely because we see the absence of france here so france has not ratified this treaty so far and india is a member of this treaty and we haven't actually tested the nuclear missile uh from the uh, from the seabed okay although we test the nuclear missiles from the ships okay but it has not been tested below the surface or from the seabed so far so it prohibits the nuclear weapons use in the seabed and the treaty adopts 12 mile limit to define the seabed area so this is basically a very basic fact related to the treaty the next treaty is treaty of palindaba so what is this palindaba first of all this is guys the nuclear research center in south africa okay so here the treaty was signed uh, which is also known as african nuclear weapon free zone treaty now it opened for signature in 1996 therefore it is known as treaty of palindaba 1996 43 countries have ratified india is not a member of this because the basic purpose of this treaty is to establish a nuclear free zone on the african nation now the nuclear free zone means that the research development manufacturing stockpiling acquisition uh, testing possession control stationing or 
the uh, waste dumping of nuclear weapons would not be allowed on the African continent. So making a true nuclear weapon free zone on the African nation. That is the aim of this Treaty of Talida. Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. So it aims to stop the countries from testing their nuclear weapons. Okay. So it opened in 1996 and it is not ratified so far. And you would be amazed to know the reason for its uh, non-implementation. I will come to that. Let's first know the members. So it has been signed by 184 members and ratified by 168 members. And after having so many parties to the treaty, this treaty is still not able uh, to get implemented. So why is it? First of all, know that India is not a member of this treaty. And what is the reason for this treaty not getting implemented? The reason is that the treaty requires 44 specific nations to sign it so that it can be ratified. It can be implemented or come into force. And these 44 specific nations, or I should say that out of these 44 nations, eight members are such that have not signed these uh, signed this treaty and those eight countries are China, India, Pakistan, New North Korea, Israel, Iran, Egypt and US. Okay, so even US which is established nuclear power has not signed this comprehensive nuclear test ban treaty that aims to ban the testing of the nuclear weapons. Okay, that is the scenario. So I have already told you what's the purpose of this uh, treaty, CTBT. Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. So it came into force in 2017. 52 countries have ratified it and India has not ratified it. Again, we have our own uh, restrictions as well. We cannot ratify such treaties when our arc rivals are not doing that. Okay, so it aims to, uh, it aims not to develop, test, produce, acquire, possess, stockpile or use or threaten to use the nuclear weapons. I hope that you all uh, have heard Atal Bihari Vajpayee's uh, uh, statement when we tested the nuclear weapons for the first time uh, in 1999. In, he said that we are not going to use the nuclear weapons first, but when the other one is using it, using it we are not going to sit back. We are going to uh, uh, retaliate against the nuclear weapons, but we are definitely go not going to use the nuclear weapons to to threaten the other person okay so it prohibits the deployment of nuclear weapons on the national territory so that is a, another point of contention which is prohibiting india from joining this treaty missile technology control regime however it does not explicitly talk about the nuclear weapons it basically talks about the missiles which are uh, of 500 kgs and which have a range of at least 300 kilometers. So these kinds of missiles are under the missile technology control regime and India is a member of it. So what is the purpose? It basically aims to limit the proliferation. Proliferation means to increase the number of. Okay, so it basically aims to limit the proliferation of missiles and missile technology. That is the basic idea of it. And India is already a member of it. 1987 may it opened for signature and it is uh, it came into force in 1987 itself 35 countries have ratified it strategic arms limitation treaty so from now onwards we are going to see bilateral nuclear treaties between us and ussr okay or russia you can say now this is not ratified it is a bilateral treaty between us and ussr obviously india would not be a member of this treaty because it's a bilateral treaty and the purpose is to uh, reduce the number of strate strategic offensive weapons. New strategic arms reduction treaty which is also known as New START and if you are following the current affairs you would know that this treaty remained in the news because it got the extension in 2021. So basically this tr treaty was opened for signature in 2010 and it is again a bilateral between US and Russia therefore India is not a member. Now it's the purpose of this treaty is to half the number of strategic nuclear missile launchers and missiles. So that's the purpose of this new, new START treaty. Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty 1987 and it is again a bilateral treaty between US and USSR. So, so far we have seen three bilateral treaties between US and USSR specifically because 
in the cold war period only these two countries were accumulating the nuclear powers and at one point of time russia had so many nuclear powers that uh, nuclear weapons that uh, it, everyone was afraid of it okay uh, in 2019 us withdrew from the treaty thus uh, by impact of it it becomes uh, non implemented or basically the treaty's effect has lose on its shine now india is again not a member of it and the purpose of it is to eliminate the use of intermediate range and short range missiles and obviously we are talking about the nuclear mis missiles so it requires destruction of the party's ground launched ballistic and cruise missiles with the ranges of 500 to 500 5000 to 500 kilometers now all these information all these facts and this information is not necessarily important for all of you at this moment of time for two reasons first is that it is a bilateral treaty and second is that it has become ineffective okay so these facts are not very much important for all of you okay for your information i have provided it in the P ppt now as i talked about the nuclear suppliers group in the beginning itself it is basically a group of nuclear raw material supplying countries 1974 mein this group was formed and uh, i have already told you that india is not getting the membership of this group when uh, it is trying so hard to get into the nsg do you know why is it it is because china is stopping our entry into the nsg because china is saying that india needs to first sign the npt and then india would get the access to the nuclear supply group now if india signs the npt even after uh, signing this npt and even india gets the entry into the nuclear supply group india would not be able to use the uranium that it would get in the nuclear missiles okay if india signs the npt then india would get to use the uranium only for the nuclear electricity generation so that is why india is not agreeing to this condition of china uh, but let's see what's happen happens in the future but that is the present scenario now if the new uranium producing countries are not supplying the uranium to india then where does india get, uh, get it from so india get it get it from the jadu guda uranium mine in jharkhand so jharkhand is a very rich source of uranium for india and presently we are using uranium from this mine okay so i hope that you have found the lecture interesting there were some facts and some opinions as well so i hope that the session was interesting for you and if you have any comment feedback you are welcome to give it in the comment section below thank you so much guys for watching the video